Hey guys, in today's video, we'll be showing you how to do a WordPress WooCommerce installation for your sublimation business so you can begin selling online. Um, the beauty of WordPress is it's very flexible, very easy to manage, um, and it's going to be incredibly cheap. You should be able to build your whole site for, for under $20 starting up and a little bit of time on your behalf. Um, we're going to use as many free, th free themes, free plugins as possible to try to make this as easy and cheap as possible. So without further ado, this is how you build a, a fully functional e-commerce site on a shoestring budget for your sublimation business. Let's go. Alrighty, let's get started on this. Uh, the first thing you'll need when you set up your custom website is you will need a domain name for it. Um, on this on this particular one, we've picked uh, gleaminggoat.com. Um, I've already registered the domain, so I'll go ahead and just but I'll, I'll go ahead and show you with a, with an S on it, as you notice, uh, just how this works. So you put uh, I usually use Namecheap because it's usually the cheapest method of obtaining a domain name that I know of outside of Amazon AWS possibly. But what you do is you just go through, put in the domain you want, search. You'll see if it's available. If that's the case, you can add it to cart and go through the checkout process on that. And it, it, it's pretty straightforward. It's just like shopping for anything else. Um, you won't want to add any services. You'll just want to go through and just do checkout on just the domain. Uh, the cool thing about Namecheap is it includes uh, the Whois Guard for free and all that. Um, you don't want their web hosting. We're going to do that separately through uh, probably through DreamHost. I feel like that's the best. I'll give my reasons for that later. Uh, usually I just do one year and you may or may not want to set the auto renew they'll they will email you when it comes up for renewal and everything so you'll have plenty of time but this is how you obtain the domain name uh, once you register the, the domain it's worth mentioning that you will receive an email confirmation and everything but it will appear in your uh, if you go to your dashboard down here after you log in um, and what you can do there is you can you can just hit manage and you'll see it pop up and and by default these will not be custom dns they'll be just uh, name cheap basic dns and they will not be populated from scratch uh, i'll show you where you get those values later but first we'll go ahead and get the the web hosting set up and configured so we can easily use that all right uh when, if you're watching this video, I assume you already you do not have web hosting set up. If that's the case, DreamHost is a good option because it's it's cheap, it's very simple, um, it's 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 really a this has it has a basic uh, panel to it, easy to add and remove domains, um, and the price is right, and they include a free SSL. Um, I recommend going with the shared unlimited plan, um, mainly because it's unlimited domain uh, versus one. Because, I mean, you never know when you might want another, another break into another niche and get a different uh, domain name and different site or have another project that requires something. And then you can host both of them on one plan and save money. So I recommend that. Um, you can just go through the sign-up link. I'll go ahead and include a, a link down below in the comments. Uh, not in the comment section, in the description of the video showing where you can get this. It's, it's really straightforward, though. Uh, once you create and or your DreamHost account's activated, you'll see domains down here um, on the left side. You can click that. You can go to uh, manage or manage domains, and what you'll do is you'll want to click add hosting uh, to a domain subdomain. And this is this is where the magic happens. This is where you put in like uh, what you do is you put in like gleaming. The, we're doing gleaminggoat.com. So we'll do that. Um, I prefer to remove the www. I feel like it's a cleaner look. And what that does is if someone goes to www.gleaminggoat.com, it'll just it'll cut the www and redirect it to that to the without the dub. Um, it'll go ahead and create you a database user and everything. Uh, for PHP mode, I usually just do whatever's default. It'll it'll probably be 7.3 or 7.4, uh, fast secure version. Um, I usually do the extra web security PHP priority upgrade. And then you click fully host this domain, and and that'll uh, that'll get it all set up in their system. So you just go ahead and click that.
uh, once you get that clicked, it'll uh, it, it should give you a, a confirmation showing it's been done. Um, what you'll want to do next, you'll want to plug in the DNS settings. So we'll go to gleaminggoat.com. Uh, we'll go to DNS. And you'll see down here below, um, we won't want to add any custom domain records. What we'll want to do is we'll want to add these to the account. And, and this is what you'll use to, uh, to, to add to the Namecheap account to kind of to redirect your domain to and have it point to DreamHost. If you want to think about it like that. So what you do is you just copy these guys go over here and you'll see where it says Namecheap uh, Basic DNS. You'll want to do custom DNS. You'll want to fill in those values and you'll want to click the checkbox to save those. Now the thing about setting DNS is it's it's not immediate. Uh, sometimes it takes up to an hour to uh, to for it to be live. But what we can do is we can go ahead and see if it's uh yep looks like our DNS is already it's usually really quick. Usually it's within 15 minutes, but uh, that allows you to go ahead and get everything set up on it. So we'll go ahead and uh, we no longer need Namecheap panel, but what we can do is we can go ahead and uh, do the one-click install option on DreamHost to go ahead and install WordPress. Now at this point you should have a, you should have a website at your URL, uh, no SSL, so it's not secure or anything yet. But you should be your page should look something like this, and if if it doesn't, then there's something wrong with the DNS or the DNS hasn't propagated yet, which is fine. Usually it takes a, a little bit of time, but usually it's pretty quick. Alrighty, guys. So the next step is to actually do the one-click install. So from your DreamHost panel, we'll go from the home, and I'll, I'll show you how to do this. Um, I think it's under domains and you're looking at you're looking for one click installs and what this will do this will allow you to install WordPress uh, with one with one click um, and what it does is you just uh, you, you do you click WordPress it'll ask you which domain to install on we're gonna install it on Gleaming Goat um, this, this you, you feel free to leave this blank this is for a subfolder like if you were Say you wanted like gleaminggoat.com, say you had your main site and you wanted to set up a blog, you could just put in blog there to get it underneath. But we want it at the root domain, which when you go to gleaminggoat.com, you're going to want your shop to pop up. Uh, I usually allow it to automatically create database. Uh, if you're an advanced user, you you can do this. You can specify, you know, a, a, a different one. But for our purposes, we don't want to do that. We also want it to be a, I think a deluxe install in, installs a couple of extra plugins, some caching plugins and things like that, things that are helpful. We probably, I don't like the WordPress website builder they do, so I usually unclick that and you click install it for me. And here in a couple minutes, it'll, uh, it'll, it'll send you an email with the, with the instructions on how to log in to said WordPress installation when it's installed. Uh, usually it takes about five to ten minutes for them to to uh, set up and install WordPress and everything. But it, it's usually a very quick process. Alrighty, now after after you install successfully install WordPress, what will happen is you'll get an email link uh, to your new WordPress installation. And when you click it, it'll, it'll prompt you for a new password. So that, that'll put you right here on this screen. Uh, and, and what you'll do is you'll want to, we'll just, we'll just use this for, for right now. But, uh, and obviously this is going to change for security purposes, but what, what you do is you just, uh, go ahead and reset that password and then we can go ahead and log in. So I'll go ahead and log in and then we'll, we'll jump through on the other side and get that. Alrighty, now we're uh, now that we have everything installed and set up, we're at the default WordPress uh, WordPress panel. This is the dashboard. Uh, if you're familiar with WordPress, you'll be very you, you'll immediately know what this is. Um, otherwise, it, everything on the left side is m most of what you need to build the site. That's where all your pages, your products will be later, all that good stuff. So we'll go ahead and get that some of that set up. The first step is usually to set up uh, WordPress itself. So usually I go to settings general and start setting up your stuff there. 
Uh, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, do, let's see, we'll go ahead and change our name. Usually, usually the tagline gets stripped off anyway, so it's not a not a big deal. Let's see. We'll go ahead and do that. Uh, I uncheck. Make sure that's unchecked because you don't want people registering on your uh, like a membership site. You want it on the e-commerce side, but not on that. Uh, usually, I go ahead and set the <clears throat> go ahead and set the. Let's see, that's not right. Oh, it's minus six. Duh. Um, where's you gonna say it? Either way, go. Um, let's see. Date, time formats, fine. Save changes. Here we go. Actually, that's gonna be. That. There we go. Perfect. All right. Next, we'll go to writing. Um, uncategorized. Uh, that's fine. Everything there's fine. All that's fine. Go to reading. Um, a static. We'll, we'll change this later, but uh, we'll change this to a static page because we'll want our shop to be it. Uh, all that's fine. Discussion. Um, let's see. Usually the default's fine. Yeah, that's fine. We're, which we're gonna disable comments on the theme at the theme level, so it's not a big deal. Uh, usually I leave I leave all that alone. Permalinks is where I make the next change. Um, usually I do the day and name, which I think is by default on the on the uh, on the DreamHost version of WordPress. But we don't want the plane. We don't want the numbers, the post numbers and such. We we want really just the Really, I even prefer just maybe the post name, even. I think that looks really nice. All right, let's go ahead and get a uh, WP Super Cache. Right now, we're going to disable that just for development. Because, like, I mean, otherwise, it's going to be a pain in the butt. We'll go ahead and delete both caches. That way, we're starting fresh. And the reason we disable cache is because when we change something, we want to immediately see it. We don't want to, we, we don't want the cache to get in our way of our development. All right, so we'll go ahead and open this in a new tab, and we should see a WordPress with our tagline and everything. Uh, we should see a sample page. I mean, this is the base basis of the website. So what we'll go from here is we'll go ahead and install our theme next. So we go to Appearance Themes, and what we'll want to do is we'll add a new theme. Um, I think a good first theme is called Storefront. So we'll go ahead and put that in. And we'll go ahead and install Storefront, because it's, it, it's the WooCommerce standard one, and then next we'll click Customize on it once it's installed and configured. Um, we'll go ahead and skip the tour. We're, we're just going to go straight down. Site identity, the gleaming goat. This is where you can upload the logo. Select files, gleaming goat. We already happen to have one, so no problem. We'll go ahead and crop it. Boom. Yep, and it'll go ahead and throw it up there for us. Pretty cool stuff. Header colors, all that stuff. You know what, this is a good point where we should maybe consider doing a color scheme of our, you know, of our website. So we'll go ahead and publish what we have, or I'm going to come back to this. The site I like to use is called Coolers, with a, just like that. If you Google it, you'll see Coolers Color Scheme Generator. And what we can do is uh, just generate a color scheme. And the way this thing works is you, you basically, you give it one color and it'll automatically um, generate your colors based on that. So what we'll do is I have a, a plugin here that's going to, let me, page first. Yep, now so that's our new theme and our, 
and our uh with our logo and everything so we'll go ahead and we'll do the eyedropper on this we'll go ahead and get this color code that doesn't seem right there we go that's the color code we need and the way this this fancy color scheme generator works is you put in one color and what you can do is you can uh you can actually lock the color and you can hit space and you'll get additional colors until you get something that you really like like you can keep going through and say you like the uh, say you like this color you can lock it say you like that color you can lock it and eventually you can go through and do the entire color scheme of your website so say that's what we wanted right there we can just make a note of these colors and and go with that and it's it'll be perfect for what you need but i mean overall it's a it's it's a good way that way you can get colors that that it will kind of vibe with the colors you're using after a little uh mess around these are the colors we ended up with right here so what we'll do is i'll go ahead and drag those to the other monitor there we go there we go nice and neat that way i can keep those in mind when i'm when i'm developing the site and what we'll do is we'll go ahead and do the identity of the and, and these are just hexadecimal color values most of you guys are going to be um, familiar with that but we're going to go ahead and do a white background for the text we're going to make it match the logo which is uh which is 493020 and we'll go ahead and copy that because we're going to i feel like I'm feeling we're going to use that a lot uh link color we're probably going to do the exact same and you'll see some of this start to kind of fall into place for the footer down here for the footer background we're going to use the uh a pale silver from our palette Actually, we're going to use that darker color, I think. We're going to do, and it's, uh, I'm just going to do the hexadecimal color value of it. And it's like a, it's almost like a brownish gray color. It would be really slick. For the headings, we're going to do those, uh, I think we're just going to do those, our, our default color, which is fine. For the text, we're going to do that in a lighter color. Because for a footer, I, I like I like light text on a darker background. I didn't type at all. Uh, BBF. Okay. And for the links, we're gonna make those match because I'm I'm weird about that. I like I like my text and links to match in the footer. That's just me. And see, there's our footer. I feel like we might can go a little darker on that background though. Like that. Like I feel like that's gonna look pretty good. Maybe even a little. Uh I think that starts to get away from it. That's not bad though. That's not bad. I don't know. Might go back to what I had. And then these are little decisions you'll make. I mean, there's no wrong way to really do it. You just, I think that's fine. I might go back and just do these white. Because I don't feel like that's enough contrast. I feel like that looks a little bit better. Background. I mean, obviously you can change the background color to whatever you want. Um, and I mean, it might be a cool effect, but for images and everything else, I usually just do a white background. That's just me. Um, for fonts, I'll show you a cool way to do that. Uh, for headings, we're going to go ahead and do the that uh, the dark liver color for our headings, which is like a dark purple. For text, we're going to continue to do the uh, the brown, which is uh, four four uh, nine four three zero two zero. Accent color, I think we're going to do that same. I think I'm going to do that dark liver color for my color palette. Once again, this is the color palette that we're using. We'll go ahead and throw that over there on the monitor. Uh, hero heading, we probably won't mess with any of that, so we'll just go ahead and publish that. Layout, so you can do, you can do left sidebar, right sidebar. I think the right sidebar looks cleaner. That's just me. Cause, because you're, naturally you're going to read left to right. Um, I mean, assuming you're English, you know, 
standard English language is left or right. So um, you want your important information, which is your product, on the left, in my opinion. We'll set up a menu a little bit later, homepage settings. We'll get to that a little later. Additional CSS, we won't worry about. That's a little too advanced for what we're trying to cover on this. So now this is the website you should have. You should have a, a footer down here, and you should have a basic template. So this is what we're going to do next. Um, we're going to go ahead and install WooCommerce, which is a plugin. And what a plugin does is it basically just plugs into the existing WordPress code to, to uh, yield additional functionality. So we're going to go to Add New, and this is going to be WooCommerce. And we're going to go ahead and install WooCommerce. And for our purposes, we're going to also install the Stripe uh, payment gateway because I do have a Stripe account. If you don't have one, I recommend you get one. Um, it's it's pretty easy and cheap. I mean, it's 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 free to set up. It's free monthly, but the percentage is similar to PayPal. Uh, but they take credit cards directly over there, and then they deposit it a couple days later. Totally worth it. Oh well, <laughs> it helps if you if you activate WooCommerce before you activate the gateway. That helps. When you activate WooCommerce, it should pop up a all kind of things, uh, and and it, it's 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 a really good guide. So we'll go ahead and go through it. I'll go through it with you guys. Um, once you fill out the address, um, we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and get this going. Let's see, what industry do we operate in? Uh, usually, you'll do fashion, maybe art, uh, because some of you may be selling. Uh, images on your site as well we'll get to that also uh, what type of products will be listed I usually do physical products and downloads that way just in case you want to sell your designs later you can do that um, nothing else you, you should be fine you, you, I mean you don't need any of that other stuff for what you're doing for the most part like subscriptions all that stuff how many products do you plan to display usually just just how many every you know Usually, uh, if you're doing more than a thousand, usually WooCommerce may or may not have the performance you're looking for. But I usually just do eleven to a hundred. Um, and usually, you know, of course, most of you guys are selling on that. But usually, I just uncheck all these because you'll want to do these later. Um, and just just answer the questions, and you'll you'll get to it. Uh, we're going to continue with our active theme because we've preemptively done storefront, so it'll go ahead and set that up. Um, Automated taxes, that's up to you whether you want to do it. Being in Tennessee, taxes are just outrageous, but, you know, part of it. Sales tax, 9.75. So we'll go ahead and do that, too. Because Jet... Now, once you install Jetpack, uh, you'll see this. We, uh, we're almost here. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and... Uh, we've done all that. We'll go ahead and add our first product. Okay. Um, we'll go ahead and add our first product. Uh, we'll do just we're gonna name it test t-shirt And we'll go ahead and do that and we'll go ahead and add a new category. It's gonna be t-shirts um, This is a test t-shirt this will this is what will display down below under the description uh, general price we're gonna do $19.99 And we're just gonna do a simple product uh, inventory one two three four up uh, in stock product shipping we're gonna do half a kilogram no link products no attributes no purchase notes any of that um, but we'll go ahead and add the category there we go and publish there we go and we'll go ahead and click the link and see if we have anything and sure enough you'll see a test t-shirt here you can add it to cart and all that'll work um, we'll go ahead and set a product image, and I'll show you how that works. We're gonna go ahead and try to find us a uh, find us a T-shirt designed. This was a custom one I made for one of my one of my racing customers. They wanted like a logo design thing. We'll just throw that on there temporarily. I'll show you how that looks. 
So once you do this, it's it's almost immediate how it does it. It's really cool. And see, there's your. That's how you do that. Now, if you want to change this description up here, it's actually the short description. So uh, this is the short description we'll put there. I'll show you where that goes. And that should populate right up here, I think, from what I remember. Yeah. And see. Now this actually will work if you were to go to go through and do all this. You can add to cart. You'll see the cart up here. We can view cart. And you know, you'll see a basic a basic cart with everything. And uh, overall it's it's pretty cool. And then of course checkout and everything works if you wanted to go through and check out or anything. Assuming we had payments and and shipping methods available, it would work just fine. So we'll go through and set that up next real quick. Actually, first we need to, we need to set up an SSL for our website. Um, and to do that, let's see. We're going to go back to the DreamHost panel. We're going to go to Manage Domains. Oh, there we go. SSL, actually, SSL, TSL certificates. And what you'll do is you'll want to add a certificate. And you'll want to do a free Let's Encrypt SSL certificate. And it'll it'll install it to that uh, to that domain name. Granted, I already had one for the Gleaming Goat. Uh, but we'll walk you through what's required to set that up. But we'll go ahead and order one for a different site so I can show you how it works. And once that's installed, all you'll have to do is you'll have to... You'll have to go to settings, general, and that'll take you back to this page. And what you'll do is you'll just want to put change the HTTP to an HTTPS on here. And that, that'll let the server know that you're expecting that page to be a secure, to be served over SSL, which will help the encryption and everything. So you'll see now when you visit the site and go to it, when we go to shop and you'll see your, you know, you'll see your test page and everything. You'll now see that it'll be it's secure now, and and you you will definitely want it to be SSL. It's it's a free feature for for DreamHost. That's why I recommend them. Um, but yeah, good stuff. So so far this is what we have. Um, if you want to change the homepage to be the shop, that's very easy to do. Um, to do that, you just go to I think it's Appearance Customize. And I think you can change the home page settings. Yeah. A static page, and we'll just do just the shop as the home page. Now we're actually getting somewhere with this website. Now we're getting. Somewhere. So this is what you have right now you have a test t shirt. And, and so you can edit this page or anything, like if you wanted to do anything with it. Yep, block editor. And it, it's going to put anything below this. So if you put, uh, you know, welcome to the Gleaming Goat. And if you did that, say centered. And let's say you did that as a, as a heading that's centered because it, is acts dumb sometimes. Then you can preview it, and it'll be bam bam. Yeah, and see whatever you name the page, it'll it'll be up here. So you can change it to, uh, um, say our catalog. And there you go. And now, see, I, I'm not big on the on that version of the editor, but what you can do if you if you if you prefer the classic uh, WordPress editor, like I do, we can go to Add New and we can do the classic editor, and I'll show you what that looks like. I I feel like that's easier if you're if you've ever used WordPress at all, and I highly recommend just doing the classic editor because the block editor is kind of confusing, to be honest. Um. I feel like this makes more sense to do it. This it feels more Microsoft Wordy if that's a thing. And see what you can do is you can 
go in, change change images and all that. Like if you wanted to add images or anything, you can do all that right here. And see, there's your shop. But overall, this is how you do this. Next, we'll tackle the uh, the menu because right now the menu is kind of a hot mess, and that's under appearance menus. And what you'll do is we'll just name this main menu because that, that, that'll eliminate confusion. We'll go to view all and we'll go ahead and add uh, my account, checkout, cart, and catalog. And we'll go ahead and add those. And we'll put catalog, cart. Um, in addition, if you wanted to add a home page, we could do that. We could just add a home link. You can do a custom link. Um, like, so you could do this for Facebook or anything. Whoops. Home page or just home. I like just home. We'll put that up top. Home car, home our catalog. Cart check out my accounts, what we should have now. We'll save the menu. And what we'll do is uh, there's like a, a manage locations thing. And what you can do for the primary menu, you can just do that. Uh, you can do it for the for the handheld menu. It'll do that. There you go. And what this does is, uh, I'll show you. Now, now your menus reflect it correctly. So what happens is, if if someone's using a mobile device, it'll render in just fine, and you'll see the site looks beautiful on mobile as well. So good stuff. So from here, this is actually a, a good point to start working on the sidebar over here. Because, I mean, right now, I mean, you see the sidebar is kind of empty. So we'll go ahead and put some stuff in that. And it's, uh, it's under Appearance Widgets. And this is what I would recommend. I would recommend doing a, uh, let's see, we'll do a product search. We'll put it over there in the... Um, let's see, sidebar, yes. We want a product search. We want product categories in the sidebar. It's gonna bother me. Uh, let's see, product categories. We're also gonna do, uh, I'd like the shopping cart if I can find it. There it is. And you can just add these widgets, and what you can do is you can just, uh, you can just drag them like I would want search product ca uh, cart categories. Uh, so we'll not rename cart. You can rename it to like shopping cart if that's more of your jam. Um, search. And so you can just sit there and rename uh, it. Uh, product categories. And see it's pretty nifty. So we'll go ahead and save all those. And now you should see those on there also. To see the cart's fully responsive and everything. Bam. So there we go. Now that that's significant progress from from what I from what you usually see. Like you could add like a Facebook link or any of that down here. You could do a bunch of different things. And I don't know if the search is necessary with it with it up there now that I look at it. So we'll, we'll go ahead and just delete that, and I'll show you how easy that is to You delete it. When you refresh it, it's gone. Now we just have shopping cart, product categories, and we're good to go. And you may it may be worth mentioning that you can easily just move that up if you wanted to. Because WordPress makes it incredibly easy to just move it up. And you'll see it flip-flop. And since we, have, since we disabled cache earlier, everything's instant. So we'll, we'll walk you through on how, how to set up the... Uh, the, everything else with WooCommerce. Like next, you'll you'll want to set up the say the products. Let's see shipping. So we'll go ahead and add a shipping zone. Um, we'll just do US. Uh. Oh, 
and we'll just do it and go ahead and add a flat rate shipping of five bucks or say yeah five ninety nine is fine. We'll just say oh bad fingered it. Okay. There we go. We'll go ahead and look at shipping options as well. I don't think we need any of that. Um, and what you can do is you can enable like PayPal, Stripe, uh, uh, instead of cash on delivery, or you can do checks. Like if you wanted like a pay on pickup option, and so you could change all this text. You can uh, say pay on pickup. If that's if that's if that's something that you would want to do with your business. Uh, I'm iffy about that. That's just me. I, I don't. I like being paid up front for everything because people are people are a little flaky. But what you can do, you can go in and manage each one of these and set them all up individually. So you can just set them all up, like your Stripe and all that. Let's see, and you can set up all the. Uh, all the various shipping methods, I mean payment methods. So from there now, in theory, we should be able to purchase said item. And we'll go through and we'll take you through the process of how orders work. So we'll go through, uh, we'll do a test, test order. Uh, one, two, three, test. Brighton, Tennessee, and we'll go one two one 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 and test at uh we'll do South Paul dot studio and we'll do a pay on pickup and you'll see and of course you can do like for local pickups on on things like that you could you can change the shipping methods and get all that situated uh but yeah we'll go ahead and place the order and you'll see in the uh the email confirmation. And that they'll receive an email confirmation. They'll also do this, and you will you will get an email confirmation of the order, and you'll see it under WooCommerce orders over here. You'll see what they ordered, and it'll all be right here. And so you can add like a tracking number or any of that to it. You can do all that. Let's see. I haven't done this in so long. Uh, there it is. Okay. Like you can put uh, completed and all that. Once you get it completed, and that way you can keep your orders kind of in check. But yeah. So we've already done all this. We've already done a home page. We've already done that. We've already done that. We don't need to do any of that. That's for like test stores. So we've got all that done. So we can set up tax. That's how you do that. Yep. And see, it's a nifty. It has a nifty little reporting feature that'll tell you your sales and all that. That's in the deluxe version of WooCommerce. So right, I mean, right now this is what we have. Um, the only other thing we want to do is we, we'll probably want to, I'll, I'll take you through and show you how to add a product that has, uh, that has variations, size variations. So what we'll do, we'll go ahead and add some size variations to this t-shirt. So what we'll do is instead of a simple product, uh, we'll make it a variable product and we'll, we'll, uh, which will create variations and attributes. So what we'll do is we'll want to add a custom attribute. We'll want it to be used for variations, and it'll be size. So we'll want to do, say, small. Uh, you'll want to do the pipe that's above enter. Uh, medium. Large. XL. 2XL. 3XL. And you can save attributes. And you'll see 
there we go and now when we do this we can create a very all very uh, what you'll want to do is you'll want to create variations from all attributes and that way it'll 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 go through the attributes and kind of create one from each yes and you can do this for colors or anything else and you'll see that it'll, it'll create each one and then you can set the price and everything price and skew at the at the uh at the various level like if we want a small to be say 19.99 a medium to be 19.99 say a large to be 1999 extra large 1999 but say we want to go up to say uh say 2099 and then say 2199 see we can do all that and then what this will allow This will allow various sizes, like you'll see all this, and then that way when they add up something to the to the cart now, in the cart it'll have a, the variation of the size. S T-shirt large, and then this this is probably the the biggest thing that you'll need for your uh, for your e-commerce business. Now, granted, you can go through and add colors or with different plugins you can do personalization and things like that the sky's the limit because there are plugins for literally everything like if you wanted a plugin for just about anything like there's a i think it's a variable i think it's like product options for woocommerce or something yeah product options extra product options so see something like this like that might be what we need yeah so you can do all kind of things with it and we we won't go through that. That might be a part two if if you guys want to see that. I mean that's you know that's up to that's up to you guys. If if you want, I can do a video on that. But this this gets you started. Uh, we'll also go through how to create uh, custom pages for it. For some reason, I have lost my admin panel. Let's see. What we can do is we can go to all pages and what we're going to do we're going to create a contact us page right here so we'll just do a simple contact us and what we'll do is we'll leave it like that and we'll go ahead and add it to the menu and that'll be the contact us i'll, I'll usually put it before our catalog but that's just me I usually do home, about us, contact us, all that. So we'll take you through how to add those real quick. And I'll, I'll go through how to add content to those. That way if people want to email you, they can fill out a form. Alrighty. And to create the uh, the content for the About Us page, I'm just going to do some copy pasta. In. We'll show you how this works. Some of you may recognize where that's from, I hope. And that's the About Us page. Completely wrong thing. I mean, that's where I want to go. About us page. Add it to add it over here. You'll see it go down there. We'll just drag it up. Now we have home about us, uh, our catalog, cart, checkout, and my account. So a pretty full menu. So, so that's pretty good stuff. So when we refresh, you should see it. You'll see an about us page, and you'll see a contact us page. And it looks really good. So next up is how to do the do the actual um, contact us form. To do that, I use a plugin I like called Ninja Forms. It's uh, it's good stuff. Ninja Forms. Yep. I love it. It's really great. Not complaining about it. 
We can activate that. And you'll see a, not WP forms, we want ninja forms. We'll go to dashboard. Uh, no, we're not going to do that. We're not going to submit information. Uh, contact us. Okay. So, and that'll be basic, basic stuff. So we'll go to email options. We'll go to email notifications. Uh, that's the system notification email that's set. So this will work as, as it is. You don't have to do anything. Usually I, I change contact, uh, contact me to contact. Uh, I usually prefer contact us. And I usually don't have it display the title because you'll otherwise you'll have. I'll, I'll show you why. We'll sh I'll show you why real quick. That way, just so you know. All right. And then we'll go through and undo it. All right. Now, what short code is? Short code is code uh, in in WordPress that when you put it on a page, it does something. It it injects its own code. And I'll show you how that works. So basically all we got to do is copy and paste the short code and that form will be right wherever that thing is, wherever that is. And you'll see it there. Whenever I hit refresh, you'll see it there. There we go. Now see, now what I was talking about earlier, the duplicate, uh, duplicate headers. I don't, I don't like redundancy. It's silly. So we'll go ahead and go to dashboard on this. Um, We'll go ahead and click contact us and to get rid of that redundancy you can go to advanced i don't know why it's under advanced but you know and then what we can do is we can uh unclick display form title and then the redundancy will go away and they'll have a nice contact us page now the thing about uh this is um like if you like whatever you do that short code is going to display it right where that text is. So if you put before and after, you'll see a before, and then a form, and then an after. So see before, and then after. So if you want custom content, you put it, I mean, it, 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 it kind of goes in line with the actual, with where you're dropping the code. So uh, uh, you can put, uh, like, not really thank you for con contacting. But what you can put is uh, our offices are open uh, Monday through Friday, uh, say 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, Central Time. Um, we will respond to your email within 24 hours. And see, now what, that, what happens is when you do this, it'll put it right up above there. And you can see how, how easy this, this is. Like if you wanted to make that slightly bigger, you could of course bold it. It's much like Microsoft Word. Pretty nifty. Now, if we want to get rid of this uh, uncategorized thing, I think it's as easy as having no products in there. It may not be though. You know what we should have done? Uh, all right, I got an idea. There's a lot of times this this is a pesky little category to get rid of. So you want to have it like a catch-all category. So we'll do all products or uh, other products. Uh, we'll change it to other products. And that's the, the slug is the URL. And now it'll become other products. And you'll see it as other products. Whatever you change that slug to, that's what it's going to change that. But overall, this is a fully functional website that we've built in, in, in like just a little bit, really. I mean, with very little effort, we have a fully functioning e-commerce site with sizes and everything, payment, payment gateways and all. And you see just how easy it is to get started. Uh, I guess the other thing we can do, we can we can change some fonts, just just because, because I don't like the way the default fonts are at all. And the plugin I use for that, um, I prefer it's called TK Google Fonts. And 
and bam. And you can install it, and it is the easiest way to do it without, without messing with the custom CSS. Uh, usually I skip. I don't allow anything diagnostic information. That's just me. So what we can do, we can open up uh, Google Fonts. It, it'll fix it. It's fine. It's fine. And see something like Montserrat would be kind of nice. So we'll, uh, what we can do is you can add... Oh, well, yeah. We can just do it this way. Montserrat will almost definitely be in here. Oh. And what it'll do, it'll throw it down there. When you... Montserrat. Uh, let's see. We can complement that with... Uh, but what you can do, you can just go through and find fonts you like and roll with that. Uh... I was looking for something a little more decorative. Something a little more decorative, not maybe maybe dancing script for uh for headers. Would be really pretty. Uh let's see if that's the thing. Dancing script for headers. Bam. And we'll go to the theme customizer for WordPress. And we'll show you how this works. Now we're back with the with the theme customizer, and what we can do is you'll see down here TK Google Fonts uh, for site title. Of course, that's not going to work. Uh, what we'll do, we'll do all headings as dancing script, and you'll see it down here. I don't think that matches real well, but we'll we'll do it anyway. And what we'll do, we'll do the body text as Montserrat, and you'll see it'll be a little more decorative. And see, I don't think that looks that bad, but that's, you know. Of course, we can change all fonts to Montserrat if you really want. And I feel like that's nicer, but... Um, what else would be nice? Like, that would be nice as a heading font. E.B. E. B. Gearmond. We'll, do, we'll change it to that. We can do that. We'll, we'll change it to that. We can do that. That's cool. If that's an option, we'll do that. EB Garamond. And so you can just, I mean, you can add fonts and play around, and you'll find something that you really like. Save changes. We'll go to Customizer. PK Google Fonts. And instead of Montserrat, we'll do EB Garamond. And see how that's it's a little it looks a little more polished to me. Now, if you really want to get uh fancy with it to customize any aspect of your website, uh I'll show you how to do that. Custom CSS Pro is what I use. We'll go ahead and activate that guy. And now this this is this is kind of scary to do, to be honest, because it's the CSS can be a pain in the butt. But but all you got to do, because this bothers me how small this is. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll inspect that, and what we'll do is we'll find what element that is and what controls it. So we'll inspect. We'll go down to price, and you'll see a price right here. So we can uh, say, uh, I think it's font size. Say if it's 2M, that's going to be double the size. So we're going to go 1.4M. And I think that's going to be a perfect size. And so you can change the colors. Like, say if you wanted red, you could do that. You know, any, anything you want. We're not going to change the color. We're just going to do the font size. What we're going to do is we're going to copy this. We're going to copy first this. 
we're going to put our bracket. Uh, font size 1.4M. Now keep in mind that's 1.4 times 1.4, so it's going to be different when we actually save it and re reload it. Um, maybe 1.2. There we go. Now this I, I do want a little bit bigger because it's kind of kind of tiny down the test T-shirt, and that is the product title. So we do the same thing with product title. Uh, open open bracket. Uh, we'll do font size. If you wanted it two M, it'd be huge. That's gonna be a little large. We're gonna go ahead and do uh, one point two on it as well. Actually, I think one point four maybe a little better. And so you can do any aspect of that to the website that you really want. But yeah, including things like this down here. Like if you wanted that a different color, say you wanted it red. And the thing about doing it and see it in this custom CSS instead is it's super easy to, uh, it's super easy to undo. Like say you didn't like it, you could just delete that code and then it's, it's done. Like you just delete the code, save changes and it's done. And when you refresh, it'll be gone. And there you go. Like you could even go by, like say you wanted this uh, font weight bold. You could do that and it would bold it. Same with this guy. Now CSS is a little complicated because it's 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 more advanced than what most people are going to get into, but but I mean if you, if you if you you can Google it and mess around with it, it it's pretty helpful. So this is our polished site, completed exactly as expected, and, and we'll go through and place another test order just to show you how it works with, with all the variations and everything. Uh, the SKUs will be up to you as far as how you want to do that. Like I say, there's additional information. It, WordPress has a full-in review system if someone wanted to do that. And see, now it, it, we got something that looks pretty good. Like, say, if you wanted to customize this aspect, you could do that. You could do any aspect of your website with that custom CSS with a little knowledge. Like, say, it has a little too much space here for my taste, and you can go edit all that. If we can find out where that space is coming from. There's that extra space. Coming in the breadcrumbs. Margin, yeah, there's our problem. Our margin's what's killing it. Yep. So see, what we can do is we can copy that. Now we don't want to do the padding, but we do want to do the margin. And if you don't want to affect something, you can just take it out of that CSS. Oh yeah. Um, this is a this is a media query, so we're gonna to have to add an extra set. Offset it. Adding yes. There we go. Changes. And I mean, slowly you'll you'll get to where things bother you a little less on the side. And see, that's way better. Oh no, it was margin that we. Want. Oh, not pad, not padding. My bad. And that'll push that down and push that up, and that's. Way better. It's less less funky. All right, we have added that to cart as a large view cart, and so you can change the color of these buttons and everything. Like you can totally make this your site. So we'll do a test order. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, test. Yep, we'll do a pay on pickup or a check payment, and so you can have it customize the message and all that. I'll show you how to do that as well. Ah, yeah. That'll do.
That'll do. Uh, seven, eight, nine, zero. And see how much nicer it looks with with the revised fonts and everything. It actually looks good. So once you once you get some products on here and get it get it uh get it going nice, it'll 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 be pretty cool. Um, just let me know what other videos you want me to do, and we'll we'll go with that. Um, I just noticed that I affected too much when I when I did the price change. So the the menu's all jacked up. So what we have is here we just have an extra A that I've just neglected to see. We'll fix that. That way the menu goes back to being normal. Cool. Uh, so as you can see, this, this is pretty easy to get a, get a good website set up with very minimal effort. This didn't take hardly any time at all, and it, it looks pretty decent. Uh, with a little homepage work, it, it, could, be, it could be fantastic. Uh, that may be an, a video video series coming up next if 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 it's something you guys are interested in just let me know um let me know what you'd like to see what kind of changes you'd want to the website anything like that but the, overall this is a good starting website for if you especially if you don't have anything at all it's a good way to get started this concludes how to set up a website for your dice automation business i appreciate you guys stopping and checking me out uh, if you like what you see, just, just smash that subscribe button. I appreciate it. We're almost up to 500 subscribers. Um, obviously, I want to keep see that number keep going. Uh, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Let me know what you think I could do different, better, anything. Uh, all, anything's appreciated. Um, I really appreciate the support, guys. All right, peace.